Uh, Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances of Mr. Shail Prabhupada. Um, thank you all for joining. Um, His Holiness Chandra Moli Swami Maharaj's daily call. Uh, today, Maharaj is not available and uh, Hare Krishna Sri Devi Mataji is going to give class. Hare Krishna. And Mataji is going to enlighten us on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto, 24th Chapter, uh, verse numbers uh, 14 and 15. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances all Mr. Shri Prabhupada. Um, thank you so much, Mataji, for coming online and giving a uh, this association. Um, you can please start whenever you are ready, Mataji. You are on mute, Mataji. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, and Hare Krishna, dear Srimati. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Agurudev. Very unfortunately, my laptop won't work today. And so I'm unable to join on the laptop and uh, share the verses with you. My humble request to you is, as I tell you the verses, can you just pull it up on your own individual screens so that you know what I'm talking about? Is that okay with you all? Yeah. So I'll just tell you the name of a number of the verses and you can go on online with a base and uh, go to that particular verse. We are now on uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Is that okay with you, Srimati, if we do it this way? Yes, Mataji. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll quickly read the verses and I'll. Uh, it's a big purport. Uh, 14 and 15, both you want to do, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes, Mataji, please start. Yeah. Okay. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So again offer my humble obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnavas Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha. I humbly request all of you to please give me your blessings so that by your mercy I may be able to fulfill the order of Gurudev to give class today. Thank you all so much for your patience. So I chose this particular verse because I was thinking I need this verse the most. <laughs> and so I'm really preaching to myself here about this particular topic which I want to talk about. What is the secret of success in Bhakti Yoga? So we are going to take a look at that. So we are on text number 14. I hope everyone is able to access the verse. I will just read it from here. Pitra dishta praja sarge tapase navam avishan dashavarsha sahasrani tapasarcham tapaspatim. Translation Mataji. And all these prachetas were ordered by their father to marry and beget children. They all entered the ocean and practiced austerities and penances for 10,000 years. Thus, they worship the master of all austerity, the supreme personality of Godhead. Purport. Sometimes, great sages and ascetics enter the Himalaya mountains in order to find seclusion from the turmoil of the world. It appears, however, that all the Prachetas, the son of Prachina Bharhi, entered the depths of the ocean to perform austerity in a secluded place. Since they performed austerities for 10,000 years, this incident took place in the Satya Yuga when people used to live for 100,000 years. It is also significant that by their austerity, they worship the master of austerity, Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If one wants to perform austerities and penances in order to attain the Supreme Goal, 
one must attain the favor of the supreme personality of godhead if one achieves the favor of the supreme lord it is to be understood that he has finished all kinds of austerities and penances and has attained efficiency in their execution on the other hand if one does not attain the state the perfect stage of devotional service all austerities and penances actually have no meaning for without the supreme lord no one can attain the highest results derived from performing them as stated in bhagavad gita 529 lord shri krishna is the master of all penances and sacrifices bhukta ram yagna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram thus the desired result of performing austerities may be derived from lord krishna in shrimad bhagavatam it is stated aho batash va pachoto garyan garyan चैंटिंग A devotee definitely proves that he underwent all kinds of austerities in his previous life. By the grace of Lord Chaitanya, one who chants the Maha Mantra Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, in this perfectional stage, which had previously been attained by people who entered the ocean and executed austerities for ten thousand years. in this age of kali if a person does not take advantage of chanting the hare krishna mantra which is offered as a great to fallen human beings of this age it is to be understood that he is very much bewildered by the illusory energy of the lord we will complete text 15 also and then speak on uh, भारी Watching them with great care and attention. Purport: It is clear that to perform austerities or penances, or for that matter, any form of devotion, by a spiritual master. Here, it is clearly stated. Who are of great kindness gave them instructions regarding the execution of and in turn his disciples took his words so seriously that simply by meditation of success after being initiated and receiving the orders of the I should not allow himself to be disturbed by anything else. This is the point of the chapter. Yes, I am a Buddhist. A K H. He points out that the order of the spiritual master is the life substance of the disciple. The disciple should be to execute the order of the spiritual master. Okay, I'll turn off my video. Mata ji, uh, also uh, I lost many things. So you spoke in between because the voice was breaking. Can you please tell me? Which uh, text you are reading? Which two texts you are reading? Four point twenty four point um four point twenty four point fourteen and fifteen. Supriya Mata Ji. Four point twenty five. Twenty four. Twenty four chapter. Hmm. Uh, fourteen and fifteen verses. Okay. Mata Ji is on fifteenth verse now, right now. Okay. 
the disciple should not consider whether he is going back home back to godhead his first business should be to execute the order of his spiritual master thus a disciple should always meditate on the order of the spiritual master and that is perfectional meditation not only should he meditate upon that order but he should find out the means by which he can perfectly worship and execute it सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ग्रेटली over and over and over again we find in the scriptures that for whatever reason you know prahlad maharaj right from the womb he was here right and he had perfected his life prabhu maharaj out of great distress he approached the lord he was given the mantra to meditate on by narad muni and he performed that austerity with great de- determination and dedication and diligence so much so that he disturbed the universal air and demi gods were getting choked up by his austerities now we see here how the sons of prachina bari were told to go and perform tapasya and they went under the water and performed this penance for 10000 years and they saw lord shiva and lord shiva in turn gave them instructions of meditating on the mantra which they carried out and they pleased him greatly and by pleasing the spiritual master they attained perfection so the reason i chose these particular verses is for my own self <laughs> and also to bring out the importance of the hare krishna mantra you see in the olden days penances and austerities were not one day two day affairs people carried out their penances in in spite of all climatic conditions there will be scorching heat severe cold winter rain snow this that but they continue to perform the austerities and penances because they were very strong they were very strong bodily mental strength everything was strong their life span was very long more than 100000 years in satya yuga 10000 years in uh, dwapar yuga 1000 years uh, treta yug then 1000 years in dwapar and now in kali yug it is shortened to just 100 years of which hardly anyone really lives 100 years you know 60 70 80 is like considered pretty old nowadays <laughs> because of all the problems of kali yuga people are not even having the full life span and you can see that over time as shila prabhupad says it will reduce even more and more until such time will come that a 25 year old will be considered a very old man hmm? that time is also coming anyway so the austerities they performed we are incapable of performing but lord chitanya is so merciful so merciful that he has given us this simple formula chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare and you can attain the highest perfection of human form of life which is what getting back our original constitutional position of being pure loving servitors of krishna hmm? so what could only be obtained in previous age performing austerities for 10000 years 60000 years 40000 years is now made available so easily and so simply in the form of this chanting of the hare krishna mantra and anybody even in the lowest form of life you know he's born in a family of dog eaters which is considered one of the lowest forms because who eats dogs only very very fallen and very degraded people eat the flesh of dogs but even such a person if he takes to the process of devotional service if he starts chanting the holy names of the lord he can attain the highest perfection of life and those who chant the holy name of the lord they have performed all kinds of austerities in their previous life they have collected many 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 pious credits and therefore in this lifetime they are receiving the special mercy of coming to the hare krishna movement now devotees are very merciful hmm 
they are going all over the world chanting congregational chanting harinam sankirtan why because they are even more merciful on, than the lord and they want to give everyone the path back home back to godhead they want to explain to people stop wasting your time stop fighting over petty things which don't matter you are not this body you are not this nationality you are not this gender you are not this position you are not this designation you are not this political figure you are just a servant of krishna so don't waste your time go back home back to godhead so this is the great result that comes from performing this austerity of chanting hari krishna and because devotees are very merciful they want to give this great mercy to everybody just as shila prabhupad did he gave the mercy freely to anyone and everyone and wanted them to attain the highest perfection of life hmm? so now once that we have received this great mantra how are we supposed to attain that perfection of life because it's not so easy we are full of anarthas hmm? we have so many challenges even when carrying out devotional service so here the formula for success is given this is the secret of success this is written in the purport simply my meditating on the instructions and trying our best to follow the instruction we can attain the highest perfection of life so the first business of the disciple is execute the order of a spiritual master now the spiritual master will also see the disciple he will not give order if he knows the person will not carry it out so there are general instructions and then there are specific instructions depending on the willingness of the candidate to receive them so the general instructions are given to everyone chant hari krishna follow the regulative principles engage in devotional service and so on but in case the candidate becomes very eager and wants to really perfect the human form of life he will with great humility and with great submission approach the spiritual master and beg for instructions to make his life or her life perfect hmm? tad vidhi pranipate na परिप्रश्नेन सेवया उपदेक्षांति ते ज्ञानम ज्ञानिनस तत्व दर्शिनः व्हिच वर्स एम आई कोटिंग दिस इज चैप्टर 4 वर्स 34 ऑफ द भगवत गीता वेयर इट इज एक्सप्लेन जस्ट ट्राई टू लर्न द ट्रुथ बाय अप्रोचिंग अ स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर इंक्वायर फ्रॉम हिम सबमिसिवली एंड रेंडर सर्विस अनटू हिम द सेल्फ रियलाइज्ड सोल्स कैन इंपार्ट नॉलेज अनटू यू बिकॉज़ दे हैव सीन द ट्रुथ हम सो हूम शुड वी अप्रोच can we approach the channa wala the this wala that wala some fellow on the road no you have to approach the bona fide spiritual master who is coming in the disciplic succession who is coming in the guru parampara succession because he is empowered by the lord to take us back home back to godhead so our minds would give us so much trouble but slowly be brought under control vyavsaya atmika buddhi ekeha kuru nandana it is mentioned in the purport that one whose intelligence is many branched he is he cannot be resolute but those who are resolute in purpose what is their aim their aim is one so i'll read the translation of bhagavad gita verse number 2 um chapter 2 verse number 41 you can pull it up on your own screens if you like verse chapter 2 of bhagavad gita verse 41 those who are resolute on this path are resolute those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one o oh, beloved child of the kurus the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched purport a strong faith that by krishna consciousness one will be elevated to the highest perfection of life is called vyavsayatmika intelligence चैतन्य चरित मध्य लीला स्टेट्स श्रद्धा शब्द विश्वास कहे सुदृढ़ निश्चय कृष्ण भक्ति कैले सर्व कर्म कृत फेथ मीन्स अनफ्लिंचिंग ट्रस्ट इन समथिंग सब्लाइम वेन वन इज एंगेज इन द ड्यूटीज ऑफ कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस ही नीड नॉट एक्ट इन रिलेशनशिप टू द मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड विथ ऑब्लिगेशन टू फैमिली ट्रेडिशन ह्यूमैनिटी नेशनलिटी एक्सेट्रा 
Fruitive activities are the engagements of one's reaction from past good or bad deeds. When one is awake in Krishna consciousness, he need no longer endeavor for good results in his activities. When one is situated in Krishna consciousness, all activities are on the absolute plane for they are no longer subject to dualities like good and bad. The highest perfection of Krishna consciousness is renunciation of the material conception of life. This state is automatically achieved by progressive Krishna consciousness. The resolute purpose of a person in Krishna consciousness is based on knowledge. Vasudeva Sarva Miti Sa Mahatma Sudur Labaha. A person in Krishna consciousness is the rare good soul who knows perfectly that Vasudeva or Krishna is the root of all manifested causes. Sarva Karana Karanam. As by watering the root of a tree, one automatically distributes water to the leaves and branches. So by acting in Krishna consciousness, one can render the highest service to everyone, namely self, family, society, country, humanity, etc. If Krishna is satisfied by one's actions, then everyone will be satisfied. However, how to practice this? Service in Krishna consciousness is best practiced under the able guidance of a spiritual master who is a bona fide representative of Krishna, who knows the nature of the student and who can guide him to act in Krishna consciousness. So this is the most important thing. And I'll skip a little bit. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, Yasya prasadat bhagavat prasado, yasya prasada nagati kutopi, dhyayans tu vamstasya yashastri sandhyam, vande guru shri charana ravindam. By satisfaction of the spiritual master, the supreme personality of Godhead becomes satisfied. And by not satisfying the spiritual master, there is no chance of being promoted to the plane of Krishna consciousness. I should therefore meditate and pray for his mercy three times a day and offer my respectful obeisances unto him, my spiritual master. Hmm? So one must become very fixed up you know, Srila Prabhupada goes on to explain, Mukam karoti vachalam, pangum langayati kirim, yat kripa tamaham vande, Sri Gurun dinatarini. So Srila Prabhupada says, it is simply by the mercy of Gurudev that even a dumb man can become an eloquent poet, a, a lame man can climb, pound, climb, can climb mountains. Hmm? And uh, a very beautiful description is there. Here's a conversation that I would like to read. Yashomati Nandan is speaking to Srila Prabhupada. This is December 11, 1973 in Los Angeles. Yashomati Nandan says, Krishna is the supreme controller. Prabhupada, yes, that conviction you must have. If you are sincere to Krishna, if you are actually serving Krishna, what is impossible for you, to you? Where is impossible? There's nothing impossible. Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate girim. Prabhupada, that one of my important god brother says, he's sincere. All others, they are rascals. He says that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said, Prithi vite achayata nagaradi gram. So we were thinking this is imagination. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult would spread all over the world. Everyone will chant. But you have done it. So he's appreciating me in that way. But we are simply thinking it is not possible. It is simply imagined. But that you have made it possible. So that is his appreciation. So Srila Prabhupada went on to then humbly describe that I have simply tried to follow the order of my Gurudev. And we know there is, you know, what an impossible feat he undertook coming alone at the age of 70 years, suffering two heart attacks, knowing no one came to the Western world to spread Krishna consciousness. And that too, he was thinking, if I tell them, don't eat meat, don't <laughs> indulge in intoxication, don't indulge in illicit sex, don't indulge in you know, all sorts of sinful activities, they will say, okay, please go home. <laughs> but Krishna consciousness took root because of Srila Prabhupada's purity, his strength of purpose and the love which he exemplified in all his dealings with his dear disciples. He called them my dear girls and boys, my dear sons and daughters. So lovingly, he guided them. This is a bona fide spiritual master. And only by his mercy, we can hope to get the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Without the spiritual master's mercy, we cannot hope to get any mercy. And how we can get the mercy? By simply meditating 
and carrying out the instructions of the spiritual master, that is actually equal to seeing the Supreme Lord. It is said that simply by meditating on the orders of the spiritual master and making them our life and soul, it is equivalent to seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm -hmm. That powerful those instructions are. So thank you all for listening very patiently. Uh, I'm really sorry about this uh, laptop malfunctioning, but we can now open up for questions, comments, realizations, corrections. Hare Krishna, thank you, Mataji. Uh, thank you for pointing out um, very nice points about spiritual master and about how Srila Prabhupada was compassionate and uh, how you had um, not many points, Mataji. Thank you so much. Uh, dear devotees, um, any questions or comments um, or realizations you want to share, please go ahead. Radha Vinodini, Mataji, please. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, dear Sri Devi Mataji, please, please accept my humble obeisances, our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to Guru Maharaj. Uh, so I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, attend to all uh, you said um, because I had uh, things to do here, but one thing uh, really uh, how to say hit, hit my ears. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that uh, when we, we manage to please Krishna, then everyone is pleased. And uh, I just realized that I, I hear this so many times and, and I still uh, really don't, don't really understand it because uh, sometimes, obviously I'm not really sure when Krishna is pleased, but uh, sometimes I, I see that despite all our efforts, uh, somehow we, we are not able to please <laughs> properly the devotees or others. So, so do you... Uh, can you say anything about this, uh, how, how to properly understand this point? So, to please Krishna directly is only Mataji, you have to uh, turn off your camera, Mataji. Shridevi Mataji, sorry. And talk a little slow, Mataji, then it will be okay. okay. Sorry about that. So, it is only pleasing the spiritual master that we can hope to please Krishna. When the spiritual master is pleased, it means Krishna is pleased because he's the pure representative of Krishna. So, whatever orders the spiritual master gives us, if we try our level best to carry them out to the best of our ability, um, you know, we are imperfect, we are very weak, we are very fallen to this age of Kali, we cannot even carry out instructions. But if the spiritual master sees that we are really trying, then simply by trying to please him, he becomes pleased. Hmm? We may not be very successful, we may not be able to do big, great things, but simply by trying sincerely, we can please the spiritual master. Remember the story of the illiterate Brahmana in South India. That Lord Chaitanya visited the temple and he saw this Brahmana sitting and uh, you know, look, reading the Bhagavad Gita. And sometimes he could see he was crying, he was so moved. But this Brahmana was illiterate. Sometimes he would hold the book upside down and didn't even know that you know he's not able to read properly. And others you would make fun of him actually, and he would just ignore them. But while he was doing that, his spiritual master had given him the order, you sit down and you read Bhagavad Gita every day. Now the spiritual master knew that this man was illiterate. Huh? So why did he give them this order? Because the spiritual master knows what order to give. He gave that order. And because he was so sincere, he tried his best to follow that order, even though he was illiterate. So when Lord Chaitanya came across him and saw he was so moved by, you know, what he was seeing, he said, Brahmana, what is it is that you're seeing? What is it that making you cry? He says, when I see this beautiful picture of how the Lord becomes the chariot driver of his devotee, I become so moved that he has come to my eyes. Lord Chaitanya became so pleased and said, you have understood the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> So, it is simply by our effort, we may not even be able to do the thing properly, but even simply by trying 
to please the spiritual master. The spiritual master becomes pleased. And then if the spiritual master sees that the disciple is sincere, then he will empower that uh, student, that disciple, to gain some little shakti and do something and fulfill that order nicely. Then when he gains that little shakti, then and he continues nicely, sincerely. Then the spiritual master gives him another order, and so on and so on. And that's how we grow, we grow up in bhakti. You know, we have to grow up. <laughs> we can't remain babies forever. So little by little by little, simply by trying to please the spiritual master, we can grow up in Krishna consciousness. Does that help? Uh, yeah, a part of part of it because uh, you very nicely explained uh, how can we uh, how can we please Krishna, uh, but also uh, part of my question was that uh, why do we experience sometimes that uh, even if uh, we might please Krishna, uh, others are not pleased. So this point that uh, that. You know, you mentioned that uh, if we please Krishna, then uh, everyone is pleased. But uh, sometimes I, I just have this feeling that uh, the opposite happens, that uh, somehow whatever I do, I cannot please others. <laughs> so, well, uh, why, why, why uh, can you explain a little bit about that? Because devotees become very happy when it's a nice service is done. Genuine devotee feel very happy to see that disciple doing something very nicely for his guru or her guru like that. So if someone is not being pleased by what you're doing, is it because there is envy or jealousy or something like that going on? What is the reason uh, why others are not feeling pleased? Well, I, I've been different uh, reasons. I, my point is that maybe uh, when when uh, it's said it doesn't really <laughs> this statement uh, doesn't only refer to to devotees so uh, obviously many times if if i for example if i uh, uh, try to cook something for my parents because it doesn't contain meat <laughs> they even if i offer oh, yes. it to krishna oh, yes. then they won't be happy <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You definitely expect that the whole bunch of relatives, family, etc., who are non-devotees will not be pleased because now this is going against the grain of what they believe in. You know, was he really pleased with Prahlad Maharaj? <laughs> no. <laughs> but Prahlad Maharaj is a Mahajan. Huh? He's a great devotee of the Lord. And till today, thousands and thousands and thousands of years later, we are still reading about him, hearing about him. Only a five-year-old boy who was preaching to everybody fearlessly. So yes, there will be many people who will be very upset when we become Hare Krishna. This is a fact. Srila Prabhupada also explained that those who are asserting, they get very upset just seeing devotees. Hmm? Just the sight of devotees and they start getting angry. So... Yes, we cannot hope to please everyone because everyone is not inclined towards the devotional service of the Lord. But genuine devotee will feel very happy if you're doing some nice service and uh, you know, pleasing your Guru Dev. Uh, you should rejoice. Wow, this is such nice seva. I wish I could also please my spiritual master. I must also try like this. These devotees, that you know, the scholarly article that inspiring me so much. Maybe I can also write something like this. You know, we take encouragement from each other's success. It uh, boosts our morale. It makes us feel happy. It makes us feel joyful. That you know, we we feel hey, one of us is pleasing Gurudev. That's wonderful. I cannot please him, but at least rather we know that he is pleasing him. So we feel very happy about that, isn't it? I mean, as disciples, we are uh, God brothers and God sisters as a God family. We feel so happy when one of our family members is doing nicely and pleasing Gurudev, isn't it? Like when Namrata, when uh, Namrata's uh, book, uh, not book, sorry, when Gurudev's book came out and he showed that picture. I mean, everybody became so happy, isn't it? Namrata did that artwork and Srila Gurudev made uh, that his book cover. Here I have all the copies of the books and every day I look at the book, I feel so happy just seeing the book cover. 
<laughs> so beautiful. So when uh, one of us does something very nice to please Gurudev, all of us should feel very happy. This is one of the joys of being a God family. Do you agree? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, it would be so nice to, uh, you know, even with, with other devotees, not just God family, uh, to, to be happy, happy for each other's success. Uh, I just um, experienced that many times it, it doesn't happen, unfortunately, mostly probably because of our attachments and, uh, and stuff like that. But uh, right, sometimes we are expecting too much. Sometimes you know we do a little something and we want everybody to say, "Oh, wow, great!" And they don't say it, or they feel, "Oh, if I say it, she will get a swollen head." Even though it is very nice, I won't say anything. I mean, they have their own reasons, but uh, sometimes our expectations may be too much. Or people are very busy in their own world; they, you know, don't really take time out to appreciate. But genuine when devotees are happy they will unknown people will come and they will tell you wow i really like that class so much it was so uplifting it was so nice when devotees genuinely appreciate appreciating. my mentor said this you know so mm -hmm. don't uh, don't get discouraged that some sometimes people are not so uh, aware you know of vaishnava etiquette we are actually supposed to glorify one another's service and I'm always very appreciative of all the wonderful ways in which you are uh, trying to please Gurudev. Please know that for sure. Um, so, um, and I'm very sure that all our God family also feels the same way. But sometimes, you know, people around us may not be. Uh, uh, I was in a community. <laughs> I don't want to, I mean, I'm not any kind of example or anything, but I can tell you for a fact that people who have been traumatized, who have been, you know, through a very difficult time, they are themselves hurting and wounded and traumatized so much, they're simply unable to be positive about anything. If there's nothing to be positive, uh, even if there's a festival going on, they will find some reason to complain and pull down the atmosphere. So sometimes we are put in such situations where people around us are very negative. But what to do? What to do? Don't let their negativity pull down your positivity. That's all I can say. Keep going. <laughs> Actually, you are really an example for that for uh, about that for me because uh, it's it's really amazing how enthusiastic you are all the time. So I I uh, really would like to learn that. It's just well. Uh, let me correct you. I'm not enthusiastic all the time. I'm only enthusiastic when I'm with you devotees. <laughs> 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 sometimes you know when I'm by myself I think oh my gosh what have I done for Gurudev I'm completely useless I've done nothing honestly I do feel like that so yes Maya is always ready to catch us and pull us down you know so uh, we need each other in other words we all need each other to help each other through those difficult times there are times when I also feel um, completely, you know, what, what am I doing? I'm not doing anything. I'm just complaining about everything in the sun, but I'm not really doing anything worthwhile. Many times I do feel like that because I'm in Mayapur, which is a completely new place for me. And I'm still struggling just to adjust to the whole thing, honestly. Mm -hmm. So there are times when, you know, we are not able to do very much. But as long as we keep trying, maybe the day will come when we can actually do something for Gurudev. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, you know, you made me think about what it means to do something for him or to do something for the devotees because just uh, now I had this, uh, this idea that many, time, many times the problem is that uh, it's not easy to separate the action from the result. Because many times, <clears throat> uh, you know, sometimes we can see the, the intention and the feeling behind a certain action, but many times not. And when, it's, uh, when we cannot see that, uh, we are pleased uh, because of the results. But when results are not there, maybe we are not pleased. And I, I remember one time uh, there was uh, one Mat Mataji uh, who, who was speaking about uh, a feast in a in a festival here in Hungary, and she said that 
uh, yeah, yeah, on that festival, oh, it wasn't really a good piece. So the, the cook probably was a, 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 had a bad consciousness. And I was thinking, how can you say that? <laughs> you know, because it wasn't according to your taste or, or the, there was kind of mistake during the cooking, but it doesn't mean that the consciousness was not proper. And uh, maybe there was so much love in it. It's just somehow, you know, the result didn't uh, turn out to be good. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it it would be just so important, at, at least for me, to to learn to make a distinction between the the action and uh, and the result. Yeah, you know, I asked this exact same question yesterday to a senior Prabhupada disciple, that when we are not seeing results or we are not feeling, you know, any effect of what, you know, efforts we are making, nothing seems to be happening. How is it possible to go on without feeling discouraged? And he said, read chapter three of Bhagavad Gita, Karma that particular verse came to mind. And he said, all the way, even in, um, I think, uh, which which are the chapter he mentioned? He mentioned uh, all the way to the third chapter, I think he mentioned. And he said, try to understand that detaching from the results is very important for us to go on because Krishna will always give results, you know. Krishna will mm -hmm. also see how sincere the disciple is to continue in devotional service. So sometimes, especially in the beginning, there's so much juice, so much nectar, and you're so excited. But then the test starts coming, which is anartha nivriti. That is a very grueling phase in Krishna consciousness, where Krishna is really trying to purify all the nasty things that you carried for millions of lifetimes. So that's the time when, you know, the rubber hits the road, as they say, and a devotee is tested. We are tested to see how sincerely we are going to continue, even if it don't come the way we want. Mm -hmm. That's why God, I mean, God family means this whole family of Srila Prabhupada, who's given us ISKCON, that they are being nurturing relationships. You know, senior devotees who have gone through this phase, they can help us by reminding us that, yes, there was a time when even I was distributing books, I was doing so many different sevas, but nothing seemed to be happening. I was going out every day and I could hardly distribute one book. It was so difficult, but I never gave up. Like this, when we hear of how other devotees went through rough patches and they didn't give up, it helps us to go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. It was really, really helpful. It's so nice to thank to you. Sometimes thank you for patiently. <laughs> thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Um, Namrata Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Mataji. <laughs> All glories to our dear Guru Dev. All glories to the present devotee. Uh, very first Please thing. Please accept my the... humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to our Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, very first thing, I, I mean, uh, what uh, Radha Vinodhini Mataji mentioned, of course, you, there is no uh, uh, second thought that seeing you, we all get uh, the enthusiasm uh, boosters. So <laughs> there's no second thought on that. So uh, we look forward to you for enthusiasm. And please pour, keep pouring that on us. Uh, my question was, uh, when we hear about prachetas, and then when I was hearing a 4.33, just uh, one thing came to my mind that how do we understand that what sort of uh, submissiveness, with what sort of uh, submissiveness we should approach to our uh, guru? You know, uh, because sometimes we feel our submissiveness is not enough. So how do we understand that we are submissive enough or not? Yeah, submissiveness uh, is not meaning that we must just blindly uh, 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 obey everything. We have, uh, we have every right and actually responsibility <laughs> to ask questions 
and to clarify the instructions uh gurudev i heard this is what you said am i understanding you correctly when you say that you want me to do this service in this way um uh, is it that um, you know i i i have to do this uh, by myself or can i get help to do it uh, is it possible for me to check in with you from time to time to share the progress i'm making so oh, we are allowed to ask all kinds of questions so that we have understood very clearly what is the order of gurudev how it is to be carried out am i supposed to do this by myself that means he doesn't want anybody else he just wants it to be done by me or he wants other people to team up with me all these things we can clarify and get very clear understanding of what is the instruction so it is not um, arrogant or being unsubmissive to ask questions not at all we are actually encouraged to ask questions to get clarity to get proper understanding so that we can carry out the order properly submissiveness is an attitude it is not that we go crawling on hands and knees and say oh gurudev i'm submissive i'm submissive that's not the thing submissiveness means understanding that here is a representative of god Hmm? who has come to save me who has come to take me back home back to krishna and because i am understanding how great this personality is i am humbly offering my obeisances my service my surrender at his lotus feet that so therefore it is an attitude it's a mentality it's an understanding of the uh, great mercy that we are receiving in the form of gurudev who has come to this material world to save us otherwise what would we know of krishna what would we know of the spiritual world hmm? so submissiveness is a, a a mentality it's an attitude it's a service surrender submission all this go hand in hand it is because we are offering our life to a gurudev and saying i am surrendering my life to you gurudev because from your instructions i will become pure i will regain my position of loving servitorship to krishna therefore i humbly offer myself for correction for edification for purification at your lotus feet that is the meaning of submission thank you i think uh, yeah that answer as well and uh, one one just one thing uh, that you mentioned that uh, we we many time make clarifications so when guru maharaj is giving some instruction for uh, instruction i okay he gave me instruction for the first time and then somewhere if i am doubtful <laughs> the second clarification i am really fearful to ask him again so how do i approach him at that time hari krishna you are you are on mute ji you are on mute yeah yes maharaj yeah sorry uh, yes we must be very cognizant that this is the very great divine personality we don't want to unnecessarily bother the gurudev and waste his time that is for sure but if you have a genuine question regarding your service you should ask shila prabhupad said that to jadurani you know he said that if you don't know something ask don't conjecture don't speculate don't make up your own ideas and then the spiritual master has to again correct everything which you have done wrong that is not a good idea so uh, do not be fearful you know you can very humbly say gurudev um i'm humbly seeking your guidance because at this point i seem to be stuck i don't know which way to go forward if you will kindly instruct me how i should take this picture or which way you want me to do this that's perfectly all right because gurudev wants to uh, see a very beautiful uh, artwork or whatever i don't know whatever instruction is given you and he will be able to tell you exactly what he wants if you ask uh, for clarification there's nothing wrong in asking for that thank you thank you hari krishna welcome hari well, krishna uh, madan gopal prabhu you raised your hand previously do you have any question or comments or anything you want to share
All glories to you all. Jai Guru Dave. Jai. Thank you. So, um, dear devotees, any more questions or comments? Thank you so much, uh, Sri Devi Mataji, for guiding us um, at, about uh, how to uh, associate with uh, Guru Maharaj and <clears throat> how to please him. Yeah, Radha Vinodini Mataji asked a very nice question. Yeah, sometimes we feel that uh, we are doing very uh, lot many things, and sometimes um, we feel that we are not doing anything for Guru Maharaj. But it's all like uh, trick. The mind is tricking you. But but also we have to. Yeah, as you said, like can we? So um, my, I have a doubt like Mataji. So can we ask from time to time that Guru Maharaj can, what can we do for you? Or um, like uh, whatever, um, where can I improve? Or like, so we can ask like that, right? So from time to time, even though we are doing some services to him. In fact, we must ask from time to time, we must check in. Uh, Gurudev encourages us to write once a month to him yeah. and uh, give him a complete, you know, report on how is our sadhana, how is our reading, how is our services going on, how is our relationships going on, what is going on with our health. He likes to hear from uh, us, his disciples, because unless he knows what is going on, how will he be able to give instructions and guide us? It is up to us to communicate with Gurudev on a regular basis and keep him informed. I'm preaching myself over here. And, uh, you know, get further instructions on, okay, maybe I'm doing this, but I could be good. So then Gurudev will write back and say, no, you should do this more or you should not waste your time with that, like that. So we must, it is up to us to be constantly aware of the need to communicate with Gurudev on all aspects of our spiritual life so that he can know and guide us accordingly. That responsibility is ours. Yes, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Revati Mataji, you have a question? Uh, thank you, Mataji. Uh, yeah. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, all glories to Sula Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you for the very wonderful class. Uh, so, uh, actually, Mataji, even I had like a similar question like uh, Radha Bhakti Mataji, uh, Radha Vinodhi Mataji, sorry. Um, like, uh, even Guru Maharaj always says, like, you know, when you become Krishna conscious, um, you will see Krishna in everyone's heart. And you will please everyone. So even I find uh, it's very difficult. Uh, definitely, I'm not a Krishna conscious. I'm very neophyte. But uh, we are trying. Uh, but it's hard to please others. Even I feel the same thing. Uh, convince or please others. You know, uh, that is a challenge uh, also face. And also like uh, uh, about uh, speculation, mind speculating. Uh, sometimes like so many thoughts comes it's very difficult to understand whether our mind is uh, speculating or like it's something like you know we are trying to um, uh, correct ourselves it's it's very difficult like you know sometimes we think it's not a speculation it's something we are really uh, you know concerned about it so how can we draw a line whether we are uh, really speculating or uh, whether uh, it's um, something you know that you really need to fix it please accept my humble obeisance everybody all glories to shila prabhupada all glories to gurudev you asked very nice question yes it's not possible to please everyone remember the story of the father and the son and the donkey so you know there will always be somebody who is not happy with us huh Especially when we become Hare Krishna, so many relatives, so many colleagues, so many people, so many people, they will not like our Krishna conscious activities because we are now reflecting to some, they're reflecting something that they actually should be doing, but they don't want to do. So they get angry with us. <laughs> what to do? So that is why 
pleasing the spiritual master is the only thing we should be focused on. We cannot hope to please everyone. But if we please the spiritual master, then Krishna is pleased. And that's all that matters. I remember asking this question when I first came to the US. I was so shocked to see, you know, me first, me first. <laughs> Look out for number one. America is very <laughs> individuality oriented. And I was coming from the East, from India, where, you know, you think of yourself last. You please everybody else, mommy, daddy, grandfather, grandmother, uncle, auntie. And, you know, the individual is the least important person in the system in Indian culture. Because the whole thing is about pleasing elders, pleasing everybody. So in my very first meeting with Rudev, I asked, I'm so confused. I come from India where, you know, you please everyone. And here in America, and nobody thinks of pleasing anyone. It's all about me, 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 me. Mm. What should I do? And you know what Rudev said? Please God. <laughs> and immediately, immediately, mm. it was like shining a bright light in a dark room. And I said, that's it. That's it. Please God. Means please the spiritual master. Later on, I understood that. That's what it means. So we gain complete clarity, wisdom, intelligence, guidance, sense of purpose, meaningfulness, everything at Gurudev's lotus feet. Simply by pleasing the spiritual master, eventually you they will also come around. And it took many, many years, but then my family came around. My dad has now become very favorable to Krishna consciousness, my daughter. But initially, it wasn't like that. They were up in arms. They were all against the whole thing. It just was such a difficult time uh, when I first came to Krishna consciousness. But my Gurudev was always telling me, eventually, this will benefit the whole family. Yes, right now it's very hard. But eventually, what you're doing will benefit the whole family. He kept reassuring me and telling me that. And that's how I was able to go on. I'm... Uh, even though I'm from Indian background, they did not appreciate my Krishna consciousness or anything. You know, it was all about karmi, you know, goals and things like that. So it was completely at variance with what they wanted. So it was very difficult. There was no way I could please them because they were totally against it. So don't worry. Don't worry about, you know, those who are in people who are not happy with Krishna consciousness. Don't worry about that. You focus simply on whatever order Gurudev has given you, I will try to do it to the best of my ability. My dear Lord, I'm very small, I'm very fallen, I'm very weak, I cannot do anything, but you, my dear Lord, you are all strength, all wisdom, all intelligence, all mercy. Therefore, you empower me to carry out this order of Gurudev. You give me the strength to do it. And Krishna will help you. I give the intelligence by which they can come to me. So like this, simply by meditating on the order of the day and trying our best to carry out that order, we will remain focused. And the mind will not trouble us so much because we will not be wasting time speculating and wondering this way, that way, this way. Just by focusing on the order. Mm, we will become resolute in purpose and we will try our best. How Srila Prabhupada remained focused? Huh? There were so many challenges, so many difficulties, but he just kept that one point of vision. I have to go to the West. I have to preach Krishna consciousness no matter what. I have to give this message of Lord Chaitanya. So remaining one point in that will help us to not fall prey to the mind's uh, you know, tricks. Is that okay? Yeah, yes, Mataji. So as you said, like, you know, always uh, reminding your goal uh, and uh, so that we can be fixed on that. Maybe mind can be going here and there, but uh, always reminding, uh, you know, pleasing the Guru Maharaj and the instructions, as you said, meditating on the instructions of uh, um, Guru Maharaj, that really helps uh, not uh, mind to wander here and there. Yeah, we are trying. I'm trying. But uh, yeah, as you said, it's again practice. I uh, have to keep doing it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, it's really your classes are really very enthusiastic. Yeah, thank you so much, which I really needed. <laughs> yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, you're on mute, Mataji. Hare Krishna. 
actually is the association of devotees that gives us everything i become enthusiastic only when i'm with you all <laughs> so i have to be very uh, cognizant that it is because of the mercy of my god family the presence of my god brothers and god sisters that you are blessing me you are giving me mercy so therefore i become enthusiastic to preach and i myself what will i be able to do nothing so i must thank you all of you for being so patient and encouraging me in my seva <laughs> thank you mata ji yeah we need your blessings yeah thank you so much hari krishna hari krishna thank you mata ji anybody has any more questions or comments hi uh, krishna shri devi i just wanted to thank you because you know every month i regularly wrote a letter to my guru ways and i do not know when it slipped out of my mind but now i realize since a few months i did not write now i quickly to go back and write again thank you very much for reminding me hi goel thank you okay great mother i'm getting sorry mother ji your voice is breaking i'll stop your video yeah sorry please i said i'm getting on that myself tipa kirti mata ji so even i will be going and uh, writing my monthly report now <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much mm -hmm. mata ji for always yeah. inspiring us thank you dear devotees any last minute questions thank or you. comments um Yeah, thank you so much, uh, dear devotees, and thank you, Mataji, for your time and association. As there are no more questions, I think we can end the call here. Um, thank you very much, thank you, Mataji. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming up with all the. I could not help much. Uh, thank today you for in encouraging me. Yeah. Sorry, thank I couldn't uh, do much on, on this uh, today. Um, but uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, Prema, Mataji, you want to say anything? No, I just say thank you. Thank you for okay. the amazing session. Thank you very much, Mata. Hey, I remember you, Prema. We had uh, lunch and dinner. Yes, and yes, and Mata. Yes, yeah. Dandavat Pranam. Dandavat Pranam, Mata. Dandavat Pranam. Prana. 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 How are you doing? I'm good, Mata Ji. And yourself? Yes, I'm good. Are you coming for the retreat? No, 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 Mata Ji. Hopefully there will be one in London so I'll miss you. Oh I'm going to miss you too. I'm going to miss you too Mata ji but I have the darshan for you online you know online darshan and um, hopefully when it's London yeah. then uh, I'll be able to make it yeah. Okay look forward to seeing you again soon. Same here Mata ji thank you very much. Please offer my obeisances to your husband yeah. and uh, a big happy little son. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mata Ji, and thank you for your association. We really appreciate it, and we are grateful to you. You know, to be guiding us. Oh, I don't know that I'm guiding. <laughs> I'm only trying to do what Guru Dev told me to do, and I'm only trying to remember what he told me. I'm simply saying what he told me. That's all. So I'm mm -hmm. very thankful that you're patiently listening. I'm grateful for you. Jai. Thank you, Mata Ji. Thank you so much, Prema Mata Ji. Please Thank do you. come regularly to the call. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, dear devotees. Thank you so much. We'll meet again tomorrow. Um, Vancha Kalpataru Pista Kripa Sindhu Pevacha Patita Nam Pavane Piyo Vajni Purnamam. Pila Prabhupad Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you. Devi Mata Ji. Thank you all so very much. And thank you, Shrimati, for excellent hosting, even under difficult circumstances. <laughs> Sorry, Mataji, I couldn't help much today, but uh, I was just uh, trying to fill in out. No, I'm also very. Sorry that this laptop failed. I had the resources. I was already.